Hello everyone, my name is Kitetsu and welcome back to my channel. So I've kind of noticed that a lot of my subscribers are either fairly new to this hobby or are completely just starting out and basically I wanted to make a video for exactly those types of people who are curious about Age of Sigmar and if they should basically get into this hobby or not really. Um, I remember when I started collecting Age of Sigmar over a year ago now I kind of thought I'd be returning to fantasy, only to find this new Age of Sigmar thing in its place, and none of the old armies were really there anymore, they all had new confusing names and tons of new models were out, and basically I just had no idea what was going on. So what I really want to do with this video is kind of make it help people kind of transition or ease into this hobby, and to answer some of the more common questions that they may have about it. How did I go about this task of trying to create this video? I basically sat here trying to think about what the most common beginner questions could be and these are basically what I came up with. Firstly, how do I get started? You know, all of the questions along the line of what's the best pathway into the hobby? What should I buy? Which army should I collect? And partly that is obviously going to be down to personal preference, but I do kind of give some helpful hints, hopefully for you in this video. The next one is about the cost of the hobby, you know, is it too expensive and all of that stuff. I think this question really deserves a video in its own right because it's a very, very difficult topic to cover. And the hobby is of course polarizing. There's no escaping the fact that Warhammer can be very expensive. And to some of you guys, some of the prices are gonna make absolutely no sense. And even to me who loves the hobby, they're, they're, some of the prices make no sense to me either. So, you know, that makes both of us. <laughs> um, if you are okay or not with the price of the hobby, you know, it's going to depend on you as an individual. Like, if you want the super quick answer, that that is it. It depends on you. And if you're not happy with the prices, I respect you no matter what your opinion is. But basically, Games Workshop has actually made it so much easier than ever to get into Warhammer and particularly Age of Sigmar and depending on what kind of hobbyist you are you can access the hobby now in much more affordable ways you know to some of us the costs are worth it and uh, you know with a bit of smart purchasing you can keep those costs down but it does of course depend on what sort of person you are what sort of hobbyist you are and what you're trying to get out of it but yeah then we have the um should you read the books and you know all of the stuff related to what order you should read them in and I want to talk about the um, books in a little bit more detail too because I've only really started reading them recently and uh, I'm now I think on the fourth one that I've started reading and I've really enjoyed them a lot so I think it's a pretty good discussion topic and it kind of neatly ties into the uh, law series that I've just started part two of that will definitely be on the way by the way so keep an eye out for it they take a while to make, and I obviously want to keep the uh, quality high, so I'm not going to rush it, but, you know, you guys gave me a really overwhelmingly positive reaction to that, so I can't wait to bring out part two. Lastly, um, you've got the whole subset of people who are going to want to uh, play the game, and, you know, how to play is something I may tackle later on with this channel, as, you know, bat reps and that kind of stuff isn't really on my immediate radar, but we'll see. You know, I could see myself doing a... Um, like a series of mini tutorials that kind of maybe tackle the uh, basic rules one day but I guess it really depends on how many people want that and how quickly I guess I can paint up my models to be camera worthy that's another consideration there now obviously that's a huge amount of stuff to cover and I can't do all of that in just this one video so I'm probably going to create like a playlist on my channel that will be made up of several videos that ultimately tackle these topics and I guess this video is primarily going to be focused on the first question with a bit of cost thrown in as well. Now the ultimate question, is Age of Sigmar good? And oh man, it is such a broad question that again it's very difficult and subjective to answer and it all depends on you at the end of the day. My opinion is that it's incredible, it's rich, it's detailed, it's got tremendous depth. It really is, to me, a multi-layered hobby. So, for a guy like me who loves it, it's a simple yes, you know, it's better than good. But, there are going to be some of you who are undoubtedly going to disagree, and that's completely fine. 
you know, it's personal preference at the end of the day, but for those of you who are new, I suggest keeping an open mind, first of all, because, you know, some people, the haters are going to hate at the end of the day, but I also suggest that you go over to the uh, lore video I made, because I think that's quite a good place to start with just introducing, uh, you know, the setting and what the whole thing's about, then come back to this video and the other videos when I've made them in this playlist, and I think that's going to give you a good guide of where to start. So, right, let's get on with it. Where do we begin? I basically wanted to talk you through my own path into this hobby, which took me quite a long time to research and plan, and to be honest, I'm quite happy with how all of that planned out. The first thing I purchased was this. It's super cheap, it's like a £5 getting started book that GW sells. It's got tons of great information in it for a total beginner, you know. It's got a pretty great but obviously highly condensed look of the lore. Some of you may recognise some of this actually from my lore intro, but you know, it does actually go quite far through the Realm Gate Wars, even if it's not in great detail. So, you know, getting up to speed with the lore here, you know, a whistle stop tour, that's pretty cool. It's got advice on collecting the miniatures. It's got a cool little bat rep in there for, uh, I think it was Stormcast versus Corn, which is kind of there to give you a good idea of what the game's all about, what the models are basically, you know, what they can do, all of that kind of stuff. And although in many ways this book is basically a printed advert trying to sell you GW products, I do think the ads are well thought out, you know, their placement makes a lot of sense and, you know, here we see the starter set for Age of Sigmar and it's crazy good value and all kinds of awesome. So. I'd thoroughly recommend that to you, especially if you like Stormcast and or Corn. I have this box set, and I'm going to uh, talk a little bit more about it shortly. Now, I'm glad this is in it. Um, I kind of want to go over this very briefly, again, for complete beginners. Basically, in Age of Sigmar, you have four alliances. You have Order, you have Chaos, Death, and you have Destruction. Every faction, or army, within Age of Sigmar, is aligned with one of these alliances. So Order are basically your good guys, including the Stormcast and the Sylvaneth and all of that lot. Chaos are the armies that follow the Chaos Gods, of which uh, were always previously Korn, Slanesh, Zinch and Nurgle, but now also include the Horn Rat and therefore the Skaven. The Destruction is like all of your Orcs and everything. Death is like Nagash and all of the cool skeletons and stuff up uh, to be honest i've never collected a death army uh, i love the models i'm like all armies in age sigmar i want to collect everything ultimately but hey i guess it's 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 money permitting <laughs> right so the grand alliances give you great options for taking allies and to be honest the way games workshop has set up age of sigmar is that you can literally build an army themed around any of these alliances and you still get some cool allegiance abilities in the game you're never restricted to a single faction within each of these alliances which is really cool you know you may get rewarded for taking like say a pure stormcast army but it's equally viable to take a combination of say sylvaneth stormcast and seraphon if you really want to and you basically just play it as an order army with its own order allegiance abilities. It's pretty cool. Um, these here, I'm glad Games Workshop has added these into this book because now I don't have to get drag it all up on the website, but these books are basically um, all of the war scrolls for your chosen alliance in a single book. Don't feel you need to rush out and buy these because the war scrolls are all completely free online and on the Age of Sigma app. You know, it's highly likely that some of these War Scrolls are actually outdated now, and, you know, there's new armies out since these books came, like Caradron Overlords, so they're not even going to be in this book. It's cool the options there to uh, have the paper copies of the War Scrolls, though, and I do hope Games Workshop does update these in the future. As an aside, this is one of the huge pros for Age of Sigmar, that basically all of the core rules and the War Scrolls are completely free, and I'm I'm just a massive, massive fan of this. It opens the game up so much. It makes it more accessible, enjoyable. 
it encourages you to take more interest in all of the other factions that you aren't collecting to see what they are, what they can do, and to be honest, the fact they've opened the game up in this way has actually encouraged me to start collecting so much more than I would if those rules weren't open. So I find it great. I can't say enough, to be honest, that I think this is one of the best things Games Workshop has ever done. And I think it was kind of a bit of a shame they didn't extend that into 40k as well, but again, that's another topic for another time. Uh, moving on, we get the overview of Vandus Hammerhand and Corgus Culls rivalry, which uh, is kind of the the uh, opening act of the Age of Sigmar, so it gives you a good overview of all of that. Interestingly, the starter set contains three of these retributors, and GW does sell two separately, as you need five for a unit, but they kind of mess this up. If you uh, do opt for the starter set and then buy these two here separately, you end up with two primes, which is basically the unit leader, and one too few of the uh, normal guys. So, not great. Um, right, then you get some great pictures of painted models, some cool tutorials on different brushes and techniques you can use. This is great for the beginner as well, because uh, this really helped me return into the hobby, as all the paint names are changed, and there's all these different types of paints now, which weren't really there before. You get the full core rules in paper copy, which is nice, and a little bit more uh, fleshed out than the bog standard, I think it's four pages, so that's pretty good. And yeah, basically it's a pretty cool book to get you started, and you also get your first free Liberator, which is a nice touch. Hang on, let me try and focus this. There we go. It's a cool detailed model, but I feel like it was meant to be a snap fit model, it's not actually quite right in that sense. I think the shield doesn't quite go on properly, so you do need some glue. Funnily enough, I never really glued this one together as I ended up with uh, two of this book, and I'm now rolling in Liberators. I have far too many. Uh, what else did I get then? Um, the first Age of Sigmar novel, which is good fun. It's actually kind of a sequel to a short story called The Gates of Azir, and I would thoroughly recommend you try and track that down and read it first, because this book as a standalone is kind of good, but it's that much better for having its prequel. Like, the prequel short story is um, basically where they do more of the character building. Um, but that being said, I'll talk more about this book later. Next we have the starter set, which is uh, such a fantastic way to get into this hobby. You know, it's crammed full of excellent models, everything you need to play, it's got the dice, the measuring sticks, the rules, it's got some exclusive models you can't get anywhere else unless you want to find them on eBay or something. And it's got this cool book with it that's about, uh, I think, nearly 100 pages long. I've had this set for a while, but I've still got tons to make, and I've been uh, powering through them this week, trying to uh, assemble them, because now I'm really interested in starting a Stormcast army. But here's the thing that's crazy about this set. You get a huge Stormcast Eternal army and a huge Corn army. Games Workshop has finally given Vandus and Cole unique War Scrolls. So if you now field these models as intended, you've got a massive 880 points of Stormcast and 720 points of Corn, based on the uh, General's Handbook 2017. And I did a kind of estimated value of this box and came up with these rough figures, but what you basically see is if you bought the closest alternative boxes of all of the units in this box separately, minus the book, you would be looking at astonishingly around 230 to 250 quids worth of models by the calculations I've got on this page. Some of them might seem quite high, especially for some of the individual figures, but trust me, go and look on their website, this is like the sort of prices they charge for these things. But at retail, this box is only 75 quid, and where I get the stuff online, which is like 25 or so percent off, it only cost me 56 pounds. So that is crazy, crazy value. And as I said, figure-wise, it tells the story of the very start of the Age of Sigmar, which is also super cool if you're into the lore and everything. Now, please note, some of these models aren't available separately. The Core Graph, for example, is an estimate. Same for the Blood Stoker and the Lord Relictor, but search up Stormcast Eternal Heroes, and they average around this price range. Another thing to note is, of course, that if you buy the separate boxes, you get a whole host 
of extra weapon and build options and everything that comes in this set does give you the most basic weapon options and it's basically all mono pose and that really bothers some people but I'm fine with it like they're great models they're good poses they're super detailed they look nice and if you really want to get the special weapon options you can just get them on eBay or something like the retributors I recently bought two of the uh, star soul yeah star soul mace heads so you literally just uh, chop off the axe head, uh, hammer heads and stick those on and there you go you've got your special weapons uh, you'll need a good set of clippers I really don't recommend you try and snap your figures off the sprues I guarantee you're gonna break some of your models you know you can pick up clippers really cheap but I do actually love the Citadel ones because they got this flat edge and they're sharp and they're just good for precise cutting so I'm a fan of those and they're a big improvement over the old Citadel clippers they used to do uh, paints you will need a few and plastic glue of course I use a knife and occasionally this file to clear up mold lines and leftover plastic from the sprues the paints are pretty expensive I'm not gonna lie but there are cheaper alternatives out there like uh, army painter and uh, they're great quality if to be honest you're collecting and building one army at a time you can build up your collection of paints slowly so the cost of the paints is not so bad to bear if you're only spending like three to six pounds on a couple of paints here and there you know I like to kind of paint all of the base coats then I go and do all of the blue bits then all of the highlights you know I, I do each bit a step at a time so in that way you know I buy I go out and buy a pot of gold paint or whatever for my storm cast and paint all the gold then I go out by the next paint and do all the next bit and it kind of works out quite well that way to be honest I've got quite a large selection of paints now and you know it's not too bad um brushes I've got a large range of them I have a few army painter brushes which are great quality as well and I've got a few citadel ones the citadel ones do tend to splay a little bit more and age maybe a little bit quicker so you do really uh, need to take good care of them and probably better than I do at least I also bought the paint guide which personally I love I know some people are like oh god you can't paint if you buy a paint guide but hey I think it's pretty cool it gives you a step-by-step -step breakdown of how to paint every miniature in this starter set and uh, yeah to be honest the liberators I'm painting at the moment I think they look really impressive um, I did have a go at doing one myself without the starter set and to be honest I think the quality difference from the way they do it in this book is considerable next we've got the general's handbook 2017 which is pretty much brand new and it's out now it's great I've done a uh, flick through of it already but basically this is your essential guide to playing the game in a variety of ways and it's got all of the most up-to-date points values for every model in every faction as of recording this video including the great allegiance abilities for the grand alliances i mentioned earlier and to be honest it's just a great book and i thoroughly recommend it you can watch my uh, flick through of it and i'll put the link of that down below in the description now battle tomes i love these books they're some of my favorite i'm only going to talk about these briefly because um i'm aware this video is getting quite long but if you really want to know about the storyline of your specific faction these books are for you and I've got the Corn one and the Stormcast ones to kind of flesh out the starter box set that I got they've got this beautiful artwork all of your army's unique allegiance abilities command traits spells and artifacts for playing that specific faction um, these may get updated soon to be honest especially now uh, the general's handbook 2017 has come out and you know some of the later battle tomes that came out have got points values in the back and obviously all of those points values are now potentially different wrong or updated so uh, I can imagine the next books are on the way but that being said you know the storyline that's contained within them the artwork is brilliant so they're still good books either way and if you intend to play a specific army say Sylvaneth for example I would say that they are pretty essential 
Now, I'd also say a good case is very good for transporting your models, but not only transporting them, you want to be able to store them safely within your own house. Here's mine, and it's a pretty good one. I bought it in my local hobby store. Um, I think it's called a sword bag, or maybe a sword and shield bag. I remember they do a sword one and a shield one, I can't really remember, but it's very good quality, and... What I've done is I've cut out some of the little foam sections to make weapons fit and stuff. The only slight drawback is that, you know, with it being a foam case, you do have limited space in there. So, you know, it will protect your models very well, but you can't fit quite as many in there as you would want, especially if your collection is as large as mine. But I'm basically going to work on making a magnetized case. And uh, I'll probably end up making a video on that when it's made. Um, now onto the pretty much the final thing I want to talk about. And in a way probably the most important because there are some of you who are going to watch this and you're going to think, well that's cool but you may not be interested in Stormcasts, you may not be interested in corn, or maybe you know already exactly which faction you want to collect. So... For some people you might think, well, the starter set's not for me because I really want to collect Death Rattle or something like that and, you know, that's not in the starter box. So, maybe that's not for you, but what that leaves you is basically these start collecting sets. And, to be honest with you, talking about accessible entry points into the hobby, I really can't recommend these enough. The value of these is really exceptional they do retail at 50 which already is a good deal but you know buy them online for 25 percent off and you are looking at 37 pound 50 without a doubt they have to be the best value way to start off your army and what you actually find is a lot of people commonly will actually go out and buy two or three of these and it literally will build up the core of your army if we quickly go on the uh, website here and have a look at some of these sets, they are quite extensive in the range that's available, and they're adding to these all the time. So, like you've now got the Fire Slayers, and I think Slanesh came out recently. Um, but to illustrate the value, let's quickly have a look here at the Seraphon box. Right, this big model here, on its own is £50 if you buy it separately. Now, that is the cost of the whole box here. So, everything else, essentially, you're getting free relative to that model. If you ever wanted that model, you might as well just go and buy the start collecting box, because not only do you get that, but you get all the other stuff free. So, you know, the value is exceptional. If you go and buy it at £37.50, I think you are really onto a bargain there. Um, I sound like a sales rep for GW, but really, I know it's, it is an expensive hobby, and I'm just glad these are here to uh, basically, you know, give you the options to uh, get into the hobby, and to be honest, I've persuaded someone to get into the hobby by buying one of these start collecting sets, and it really helped encourage me to get back into it too, because I was concerned about the cost of it, so, you know, these sets are great. Um, I personally bought the Sylvaneth one, and one thing I really love about these sets is that they contain the proper options that come with buying the models separately. So unlike the £75 starter set, in these you get masses of build, pose, and weapon options. Take the uh, Sylvaneth box for example. On the box, and I believe on the website too, it just says that you get a Tree Lord, and you think, well... Okay, you get a Tree Lord in there, that's really annoying if I want an Ancient or a Spirit of Durthu. But, crack it open and you get the full options to build the Tree Lord, the Tree Lord Ancient or the Spirit of Durthu. Which, that's brilliant. The Stormcast set, despite containing those two quick build Retributors that I mentioned earlier, it has the full options for taking like the Grand Hammers, War Blades, Grand Blades, Dual War Blades, Hammers and Shields, everything. It's all in there. The Prosecutors get the options for the uh, Celestial Hammers or the Axes. You can even build them with the uh, Stormcall Javelins and Shields, I think they're called. 
you know, if making the uh, rules available free to everyone was the best thing Games Workshop has done with Age of Sigmar, these sets are the second best thing, and it just makes the hobby affordable. Not necessarily affordable, but more affordable and more accessible. So, you know, I'm all about that, making people get into the hobby better. You know, obviously, from here, it's a great place to start. Then you can go and think, well, maybe I'll add a, a, an extra unit of these or a few of those extra models, but it's a good way to do it. If you try and do this without a start collecting set, you can guarantee the cost of your army is going to be way higher. But yeah, pretty much that is me and my journey into the hobby. That's um, how I went about it and I'm very pleased with all the stuff I have. One other thing I would really quickly mention is uh, when the range was released, they also released this big hardback book, which hang on, let me... I've splice some footage in here from my phone because I haven't got it in front of me at the moment but it's a really cool book and it's it was kind of frowned upon at the start because people complained it had too many pictures in it and not enough words but there is actually a huge amount of content in here to uh, digest and break down and you know I've used this book a lot for my part one of my lore video and it really does set the scene give you all the details you want to know on the world you, if you want to know like what the Skaven are up to or you know what the biggest conflicts are in the uh, Realm Gate Wars or just all of the little details that you want to know about the setting. If you want to go beyond that little £5 uh, kind of start getting started book that Games Workshop brought out this is very much more in depth. It goes into like the Age of Myth and all of that and there is also the kind of citadel realm gate war books that have come out which are quite expensive but if you can uh, pick up one of those second hand there i i personally love them as well i probably wouldn't pay full price for them G guess it depends on how much of a uh, fan you are but yeah really nice books really really great artwork you know there is a lot of art sure but when you look at the quality of the pictures i'm not complaining um anyway yeah so that's basically it for me for now. Um, I hope you found this interesting and useful. Let me know in the comments if there's any specific questions you have related to the topics I've talked about here. And uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe. You guys are absolutely killing it as always. I'm, um, as of recording this, on 485 subscribers. And as always, I can't thank you enough. It's been unbelievably cool. I, I just can't believe it. I've never enjoyed doing anything probably as much as doing this and it is literally because of you guys each and every one of you you're amazing just thank you so much sorry if i sound a little bit like bunged up as well today i do have a really bad cold but that's why i want i wanted to record this yesterday but i thought let's at least save it till i can talk <laughs> but yep that's it for me also um i thought i'd just mention if you guys do want to uh you know follow me what i'm doing keep a track of when these videos are coming out and all of the stuff that's going on twitter is your best bet so head over there and follow me it's not required it's not urgent you don't need to but if if you'd like to that's the best bet you know i always say in my uh, comments i've got facebook as well but i rarely update the facebook page and the twitter one i update far more frequently so you know head over there if you want to know when videos are likely to come out um yeah so i guess that's that's it for me don't forget to like and subscribe as I said and I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, so long.